This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. Hello, this is Hiroja Shai, your moderator for this chat. And this is another episode of F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. On this episode, we're doing review number four of the movies that I feel have um, influenced or their elements of their story have been interwoven into the overall narrative that is the Mr. Robot television show. And so on this review, we're going to review Hitcher. Now, Hitcher is an, is an old movie. It's, it's from the 80s. So many people might have not seen it or watched it. It's one of those B uh, horror films where it was a lot of emphasis on just like terror, if you will, a little bit more violent, not the best production. They didn't have like, you know, a uh, Lister's review, if you will. Um, even though um, when we talk about some of the, the actors in the movie, they all have gone on to do other things. Uh, it's, it's just one of those B movies. In fact, uh, the main villain, um, the Hitcher, or as his name in the movie is John Ryder, uh, Richard, Richard uh, Hager, or Hager, I, I know I'm mispronouncing his name, but he, he was known for doing some of these kind of like B-shock, shock clock movies, if you will. Um, he's a well-regarded actor. He kind of goes in and out into the realm of A-listing to uh, B-movies. He's known for uh, being the uh, cyborg or the android in the Blade Runner movie, the one who dies and talks about the, the tears in the rain. Uh, he's the knight in Lady Hawk. Uh, he, he has done a, a, what's the name of this movie? It's like a B movie where he's like, the, I think he's even called the blind samurai. Uh, he revisited his horror roots when he did uh, like Hobo with a Shotgun. Uh, so he's done a few of these movies over the years. Uh, and he's just fascinating to watch. He's really... Um, He's just, a, he's just a really scary dude when he wants to be. Um, he's done some kind of comedic stuff as well, but this movie, he I think is his real forte into the, like, terrorizing people. It's called Blind Fury. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Where he's a blind samurai. <laughs> um, 1990s when that movie came out. Uh, you know, just weird funny stuff that he's chosen to do as an actor I personally like him I think he's a very good actor uh, like I said he he's played horror films in the past and different um, kind of B shot Shylock movie Shylock what I say shot you know just B B movies B horror movies and it's just it's just fun to watch him play this hitcher terrorizing Thomas C. Howe who is coming from basically the I think it was like the Outsiders was his previous role to that like a teen he was like a teenage actor in the 80s very big uh he was trying to I guess you could say transitioning from being a teenage um actor into adult roles he didn't transition very well he wasn't really until maybe when he was a full grown adult in his 30s that he you really started started seeing him again in um, movies and television shows and I, I find him to be a very funny and very engaging actor um, and then there's Jennifer Lee Jennifer Jason Lee uh, she's a very well known actor I even think she's Oscar nominated um, but basically what it is is basically the, the premise of the film if you will the hitcher is a young man who escapes the clutches of a murderous hitchhiker is sequentially stalked by the hitcher and, fr- and framed for his crimes. So, you know, Jim Hassel or Tom- Thomas Howell, C. Thomas Howell, he, uh, he's going on a desert road trip, driving out there, and he, you know, he gets into a bad situation with um, the hitcher, if you will. Um, and the reason why I, I picked this film is, is this film takes place in the desert. And the, the, the reason why I think desert 
horror films are better than the ones that take a place in the woods, whether it be like cabin or a house or haunted house, or people go out camping or something like that in the woods or like those Jason movies or anything like that is the desert is so desolate in a, in a sense. Um, you don't really the necessary see life everywhere like you do with the forest. You see the trees, the birds, the bugs, if you will, unless you don't hear the bugs and the birds and then you know like predators near you or something like that. Oh, Predator. Predator takes place in the jungle. That's a horror film. Uh, so it's teeming with life. And so you get the impression, even if you're in the middle of the woods somewhere, that you can find civilization because you're, you're surrounded by life. So life must be nearby. If there's a river, there's a water, there's, it's teeming with life. You don't get that impression with the desert. The desert is desolate. Uh, it's hot. Uh, it's arid. You can see for miles and miles around you. There's no obstruction near your view, depending on where they film the location of the desert. And because of that, uh, it's very uh, discouraging. You know, you're trying to run away from the villain. You're trying to escape, and there's nowhere to escape. Even if you were to get into a car and and right out of the, your location, the villain knows the direction you're going. You can't obfuscate your your pathway, and so they can pursue you. And so it's a matter of just outrunning the villain to escape. And that's why I think the the desert ones are so um, intense and thriller esque, if you will. Also, for example, like the hills have eyes, or uh, even tremors, you know, you have to deal with um, the weather, not so much in the forest woods once. I mean, I think a few of them have done rain or something like that, but the lack of water, the lack of resources where you can be hydrated and can literally die from nature before you can get killed by the villain. So, like I said, it's a, it's a great B movie. I really enjoyed it. I think it still holds up, but I could have nostalgia eyes on this one. I know they did a remake with um, Sean Bean as the Hitcher. Um, I haven't seen it, so I can't recommend it for you. But Sean Bean's always he's always a good villain, so it might it might actually be entertaining. But for the purposes of the re- of this review, I didn't watch the Hitcher. Uh, let me see what other yeah Hobo with a shotgun. What other like just like uh, Thomas uh, How. Uh, the 80s and the 90s was like a big year for, or a big film period for Rupert Howard. Uh, Lady Hawk, Fresh Blood is one of those films. Um, Bloodhounds of Broadway, so Blind Fury. Yeah, he, he was kind of known for that. Oh, he was also in Bucking the Vampire Slayer as uh, the movie as Lothus. Um... So yeah, he's been around horror films for quite some time. Let's see. I don't know if C. Thomas Howe did another horror film after The Hitcher. Let's see. Oftentimes, like uh, particularly young Hollywood stars, uh, they do a horror film and that's kind of their way of breaking out. You know, you see uh, that often a lot. Uh, Look at the cast from Scream. Um, let's see, was another good, um, Final Destination. Some of those actors did pretty well afterwards, not all of them. Um, let's see, uh, of course, uh, Kevin Bacon from the Friday the 13th movies, Nightmare on Elm Street, you got, you know, Johnny Depp. So, if, as breaking out as an actor, you know, you, you kind of do like a horror flick as a way to distinguish yourself out there, out in there in the marketplace, if you will. Uh, let's see. Did C. Thomas Howe do another horror film after this one? I have a feeling that he did. Maybe he didn't. I know there was like a huge gap. Pretty much, I want to say after The Hitcher. Um, let's see. This is like way in the 80s. So, he had Outsiders, Tank. Tank is another one of those. Uh, Red Dawn, The Hitcher, oh, Soul Man, Soul Man, ugh, ugh, Soul Man, terrible movie, terrible movie. Uh, Return of the Musketeers, uh, kid. So, well, he still continued to act, and it looks like he, oh, he was in Gettysburg. It's pretty, 
significant as a big movie. Is it the right Gettysburg? Is it the Gettysburg I'm thinking about? Yeah. Um, directed by Rod Maxwell, Tom Bernard Martin Sheen, Stephen Lang. Yeah, so is that Gettysburg? Um, and some of these other movies I have no idea. It wasn't really till maybe. I would say. Where did he go? He kind of bounced around a lot. Uh, what was it? I saw the side of the beach, no. Huh. He did do a hitch or two, I've Been Waiting. A sequel. Haven't seen that, didn't know that. Hillside Strangler, okay. Uh, that's kind of horror. That's probably more of a thriller, a War of the Worlds. So, 24. 24 is when he was in 24, so that's when day five, so season, the fifth season. Um, you start seeing him more often. Um, bounced around television more, and then I think it was, what TV show was he in? Like, it was a cop show that he was in for quite a bit. Southland, uh, Criminal Minds, uh, Grimm. So he's been in TV. What's this even? Oh, huh. Okay, Animal Kingdom, which is currently right now. Outcasts, Stitchers. So... It wasn't until really as a full-grown adult that he really started getting, I would say, better television, or mostly television, but better roles for himself. Um, didn't really have that breakout role, if you will, that would allow him to uh, succeed. be interesting to see what the Hitcher 2 is about. But... Jennifer Lee. Let's see what Jennifer Lee. I know she was Oscar. I want to say she was a single white female, which was just a huge, it was like a stalker esque uh, film. It's like one of those roommate films. I think they did a kind of similar film when in the 90s, if you will. Yep, single white female. Yep. So she, and she was in Twin Peaks, the new. Season. Um, but yeah, single white female. She was the past time she was around time. So she was like a, from the 80s. Thing. Yeah, she was. So yeah, Jennifer recently started in like this very like stalker ass rumor roommate with, um, who was it, Bridget Fonda? And she was the villain in the film. And so it was a it was a good film. I haven't seen it in a very long time, so it's not coming to memory. She was also in uh, Doors, Claiborne, the Stephen King film. Um, she recently is in Hateful Eight. You know, she's a great actress. Um, I've enjoyed her work. Uh, she has been continuing to make films, just as uh, the other actors have done so. Uh, she has um, reappeared in horror Amityville, 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 The Awakening. Um, there's another film, Dolores Claiborne, Stephen King is kind of horror esque, if you will. Extension Z, that had like a sci fi horror element to it. And of course, single white female. Single white female um, for, I guess you could say, a good, interesting chunk of a certain demographic that was the film, horror film, if you will. But again, the reason why I bring up the Hitchers, like I said, the desolation, the isolation, the desert. Tritton and Mulby in, um, are being taken away by Leon in his Cadillac. And he's having this conversation as they're tied up in the back about uh, Knight Rider and you know, the merits of uh, the main actor from Knight Rider, uh, Hoffman, his character, how he is a bit of a badass, but he doesn't quite understand about how Fraser can get all the chicks or something like that. It was a, it was interesting dialogue, but the way the scene was filmed, as you're seeing what we perceive to be the eventual, and we eventually find out, the eventual death of... Tritton and Mulby um, as he's driving them out in isolation. 
kind of sort of reminded me of the 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 hitcher uh, you know it it wasn't the first i think desert horror film that i've seen i think i've seen other ones prior to that um like tremors i might have seen tremors before i saw hitcher um there's a, a lot like hills have eyes i want to say i did see the original hills have eyes but like the the recent remake the one from the 2000s was t- taking place in the desert and that was extremely scary um phil it just brought like the isolation and the hopelessness that Trenton and Moldy were in in episode uh, seven of Frederick and Tanya, and you know they they moved to Arizona to escape. They did everything that we expect people from horror films to do. The things that we've asked them to do for years, you know, screaming at at the the movie screen. Don't go find out what that noise is. Don't go that down the hallway. Don't go back and get your friend. You know, just run, run, run. And they did that. They dropped everything and got the hell out of New York. And still, um, the villain still tracked him down. In this case, um, the avatar of that villain is Leon. And it's uh, the cult of the Dark Army that has uh, ensnared uh, Triton and Mulby. Uh, found out where they are located. Uh as we realize in the scene, at the end of the scene, that um, Leon is burying their roommate, uh, Moby's friend, uh, out in the desert because he's he's not part of their plan, if you will, or the plan that the Dark Army has. They're tied up in the back. Uh, Trenton is able tells Moby that they're not all hope is lost. That she has a backup plan. Um, information is going to release to someone who's a trusted person. We later find out that trusted person is Elliot and um, is going to decrypt the servers and basically undo everything. Uh, she escapes from her um, from her bounds, which I really appreciate as someone who's been a, a horror watcher for years, that they allowed um, for her to escape. Um because for often or not, um, female protagonists, whether it be the final girl, which is a thing of horror, where the final girl, you know, the virgin girl lives, or the, even the expendable girl, um, have no agency. They're like damsels in distress. They don't know how to fucking run. That's so goddamn annoying. Uh, they make cheerleaders be like stupid and dim-witted and, women, and non-athletic. And in fact, cheerleading is the most, uh, well-played sport by, um, by young girls and women um it is a sport is one of the most dangerous sports it's very injury prone due to the fact that they're doing all these flips and stuff like that it incorporates dance moves and gymnastics and a lot of a lot of athleticism is in into this sport uh but because we don't value female sports or view women particularly in these horror flicks um they're more just sexual objects of desire in many cases some of that has changed um they're always played as stupid and dumb. And I, I really appreciate in this very horror-esque moment that Trenton was able to engineer her escape. She wasn't waiting to die, like kind of like Moldy was in the back of that car. Uh, she got out of the uh, the braces they were in, the uh, means in which Leon was had them tied up. Granted, she failed to escape because she didn't know how to drive. Which I understood in the internal logic of having um, someone who grew up in New York not needing to know how to drive. Uh, it kind of felt like a cop-out to me personally, given that she was a hacker uh, on the computers all the time, college-educated, no doubt played video games, media consumption, and you know, just by sheer osmosis of picking up the basics of how to, to know how to drive. I mean, if six-year-olds, even before the advent of the internet, or, the, or I should say the proliferation of the internet and video games as a home entertainment system were still like stealing grandma's car. Uh, if kids could play GTA and were able to, you know, somehow navigate and go on full on um, police chases, you know, go out and do hood rat shit with their friends, then Trin could have had this, this skill set of being able to at least drive straight or drive out of there. But I guess you could say for the sake of plot, um, and it was very amusing, and it's still, like I said, it makes an internal logical sense of somebody having lived in a large city like New York where there's not really a need to know how to drive. I've known full-on grown adults 
who've um, lived in major cities like that, like New York or Chicago or London, and that have never driven a vehicle. They've been in vehicles, um, they've been in transportation of some sort, but they themselves don't know how to drive because it's unnecessary. They didn't, never had a driver's license. Um, gone good chunks and periods of their life without having to have um, identification because they didn't drink or didn't smoke or have no need for it um, until they basically got out of college. So like, you know, 23, 24, 25 years old, finished grad school and finally going off and getting that state ID. Um, so I guess for the, you know, sake of plot, you know, had to crash the Cadillac into a boulder. But again, I still appreciate it because, you know, um, the show had done a, a way better job in a typical horror movie fashion film of, you know, having a female character uh, having some agency. Because it was a very horror-esque moment. They're being driven out in the desert. They're isolated. They're tied up. They're having, like, this super killer villain, if you will, which is what Leon is. We know him to be a, uh, a killer that has... Uh, almost magical abilities to kill people we saw that with um in season two when he helped elliot live for being gang raped in the prison uh, we would later see it in the season finale where he takes out um the members of the, the dark army cult on the word of um, white rose and we know he's a very proficient and efficient killer he almost has almost like a super superhuman-esque quality to him, much similar to the maniac killers of the, the horror films like Jason and Michael and even, to some extent, the Hitcher. And so um, they were, you know, they were kind of done so. Uh, the other aspect of the fact that they are being blamed, Trent and Moby are being blamed for the building 71 attacks and that they are part of like an Iranian terrorist cell and that there was another attack going on with planes and they were being set up which is very similar to the Hitcher and some um, thriller-esque uh, serial killer or crime drama films um, you might say it was bar- borrowed from but for the purpose of this review just the Hitcher and the fact that they're taking place in the desert they're being set up and blamed for crimes they did not commit and they're being blamed by um, another um, aspect of horror films is the crazed cult that follows the leader and does uh, satanic or ritualistic killings for the purpose of furthering an agenda. And if you look at the manner upon which Trinity Mulvey died and the purpose of them dying, they were sacrificed um, for a higher cause for the purpose of of the cult for enabling and allowing for um, White Rose to further her agenda, which was to make sure that the Washington Township plant device was safely secure and the Congo vote would go through. And we later find out a lot of this had to do with petty reasons. She really didn't have to blow up those buildings, but she wanted to get back at Philip Price to basically destroy his reputation in his career for his failure to protect her device um, absolutely. So that that sacrifice by the cult in the garage, it does have a bit of a, a horror to it. It has a bit of a, I almost want to say Rosemary Aspect, which is a, another horror film is directed by Roman Polanski. Um, I understand if you would want to watch it, not just because it's from the 70s and it's older, uh, but because of the, the director's reputation. Um, it has Mia Farrow as the woman. Um, there's a few other, if you have watched older films, you see character actors in there. They may have seen um, some older films from the 70s, 80s, and 60s in it as well. But the basic premises of the film is this woman is pregnant. She's She's having some issues with her pregnancy. She feels that there's something wrong. She talks to her doctor, her husband, her neighbors. She feels very isolated. She feels there's it. She feels there's something off or wrong. Something's going on with her baby. Someone's trying to hurt her baby. Something might be wrong with her baby. And it's just a, a manifestation of fears. And women do 
do legitimately have about their pregnancies and it's just done in a horror-esque way. It turns out as she gives birth, she's actually giving birth to Satan. And a lot of the cult members or her neighbors or cult members um, are there to praise the, the rise of the, their satanic leader. And at first she's at horror, you know, um, at first she's dealing with the horror of what's going on and realizing she's been tricked and all the downplay and everything like that has happened to her and her fears were legitimate but she looks upon her child and at first she was aghast but then she she's a mother she loves her son she loves her child and embraces her devil baby and it's it's a very interesting story but the way that Trina and Moby went down with them being forced to commit suicide with the device the way that Grant was talking to them about the necessary means of them being sacrificed, the way they were set up. It was kind of very ritualistic, um, very sacrificial. Uh, we've seen some other films that have done this. Uh, um, Why Eyes Wide Shut as a kind of like um, Stanley Kubrick, which um, Sam Ismila said that he's been influenced by Stanley Kubrick. And you see some of the shots and the visuals in his films um, from Stanley Kubrick's films in Mr. Robot. Um, the hills have the eyes wide shut, which I haven't seen in decades. I basically haven't seen since it first came out. Um, do have that ritualistic aspect of the cult, sex cult thing that's going on in that film. Film so confusing. I'm probably why I've never really seen it again. Um, also very reminiscent of that. Um, and so here we have two characters that really all they did was follow the wrong person. They followed Elliot and or Mr. Robot, the, both of them, really, that those two personalities down a path that really didn't bring about much of anything. And because of that, they, they're facing death. Um, they're being sacrificed for this higher purpose that has even has absolutely no meaning at all. It's for a petty move on the part, on the part of two very powerful men. Um, thousands died. In, I guess you could say that's analogous of nation state moves, if you will, and even past um, war and conflicts between nation states where thousands of people died for, for pettiness, if you will, for absolutely nothing, nothing that could have been resolved or ignored or just not dealt with at all. Uh, thousands has died in the case of the Building 71 and in the case of these two characters, Trin and Mulby. I do have to say just one last bit as I um, wrap up this review and, and explain just maybe just how the Hitcher um, that at least horror in itself in this particular film just the visuals the desert horror film and it just this movie was the first one that popped into my head when I saw this episode uh, it might not exactly have been that film it might have just been that whole genre of films if you will that um evoke this or being interwoven is I, I kind of wish and again like I appreciate the fact that at least with this movie I'm not this movie this particular episode that Trent was able to you know have some agency that other horror films and I know there's some films that have done this it follows in your necks would allow for women <laughs> to have a bit more agency in the, in the horror flick I think it would make it more interesting more compelling I mean, for Christ's sakes, women do know how to run. Um, martial arts and self-defense classes are a thing for a while. Being able to fire a gun is a very, particularly since most of these films that I watch are American-made films, is an American thing. If Even if you have never fired a gun, most just from sheer action films and video games have some inclination of how to fire a firearm. Um, so... I give them kudos for making some kind of effort. I understand for the plot, Trenton had to go. She was one of my favorite characters. I'm sad and upset by it. But I do like that, like I said, I do like the fact that for a brief moment, she had some agency to try to get herself out of being in the clutches of death. The last bit I want to say is that, you know, this entire season three was, for me, evoked a very horror film-esque core underlying theme you know season one was definitely like a heist influence uh movie um 
second season was like the getaway whodunit mystery with F society trying to get away with their actions and Dom trying to figure out and the FBI trying to figure out who had done the actual five nine hack. Um, and there's many episodes I think really fit with the horror aspect aspect, particularly the next episode that follows, which is Don't Delete Me, in which we have um, Trenton's brother following Elliot, and it's kind of like a ghost story, like from others in some other films. Um, you know, you also have a possession story with the episode Metadata, um, a madness story with Shutdown, both of those having to deal with Angela and um, Elliot, you know, Elliot being actually fully possessed by Mr. Robot. Um, Angela breaking down and, and turning into a completely disheveled person because of her actions. Um, there's even a bit of a stalking aspect of a, a horror, if you will, with uh, Undone, with um, Elliot tracking down uh, Darlene to her FBI um, apartment and uh, Tyra Wellick's wife, um, Oh, God, her name is Joanne getting killed by the boyfriend. Um, Outbreak slash collapse of society in runtime, the one single shot episode. or I mean, runtime, that entire one shot episode is extremely reminiscent of movies like uh, World War Z or 20 Days Later where the mob of zombies come after um, the protagonist in that film. Other uh, kind of dystopian films that might not necessarily be horror uh, genre related, but maybe horror adjacent, where you see the mad rush of crowds of individuals and people, um, just chaos in general, the collapse of society. And it's um, it was a very fantastic episode in and of itself. Um, I hope they definitely get a, you know, an Emmy nomination, and I'm, I'm no doubt that, that episode is going to be, if you're into film or television, something that's either being studied now or will be studied by future uh, filmmakers and creators on how to do um, that type of a, uh, either a one shot or that type of an episode in itself. But um, in general, overall, I, I do think that The Hitcher is a good. You know, like I said, be B movie. If you want to see the cinematic landscape of the desert, um, one of the early, I would say, movies where a young person is not believed by authorities as a villain slash mon- monster comes after them and has to do things on their own, which is now a very well worn um, horror trope. So that's it for my review. Um, thank you for listening and. What is next up? Let me see what's next up on our list of movie reviews. Oh, Shallow Grave. Uh, a movie about three roommates and a, and a bag of money. And until next time, this is Hiroja Shive, your moderator, logging off for now. This has been a Hiroja Shive Space Odyssey Network production. <laughs>